We've had something of a Peninsula War theme within the From Reason to Revolution series over the last few months, so I thought it might be nice for this video to do a roundup of, uh, of some of those titles for those who are interested in, in that topic. Uh, the most recent of them is uh, Kenton White's The Key to Lisbon, which is a, uh, a very detailed history of the, uh, the last French attempt to invade Portugal in 1810. Uh, Kenton's background is in the history of the military use of maps, uh, and for those who are familiar with that campaign, one of the uh, one of the key issues that the the French in particular had to contend with uh, was knowing the lie of the land um, uh, and the fact that they frequently didn't uh, uh, it was a, a key a key factor in why, why that campaign ended in, in failure for them uh, and that's strongly brought out in in this book uh, so that is one to recommend uh, for a lighter and a more personal uh, look at the war we've got. Um, Another instalment from the, the King of Napoleonic Memoirs, Gareth Glover, uh, who's done this one on uh, uh, the letters of, uh, of George Barlow, who was an officer in the peninsula with the 52nd Light Infantry, uh, and then later served at Waterloo with the, uh, with the 69th. You get some Waterloo as well in this one. Uh, and typically for one of Gareth's books, it's, it's the original material fully annotated, so uh, people who are mentioned and places and so on are identified, and there's a, there's a commentary to tie all the, uh, all the letters together. I think a lot of us probably got to know the Peninsula War through Sharp uh, and the Rifles. We're all familiar with the 95th, maybe some people less so with the 60th Rifles, the Royal Americans. Uh, this should hopefully change with um, Rob Griffith's uh, new history of the uh, 5th Battalion of the 60th Rifles. It takes them right the way from being formed, from detachments of the various emigre units that have served in the 1790s through fighting in, in Ireland, in the, in the Irish Rebellion, uh, in the West Indies, uh, and then back to Europe and all the way through the Peninsula War. And as Rob points out, they're one of only three battalions to have landed on the very first day at Mondego Bay and fought all, fought all the way through till the end of the war. Beautiful illustration for the cover by Krista Hook, and there's more by Krista inside, along with some original uh, artwork from the from the period depicting the, uh, the soldiers as well. And lastly, we've got uh, we've got this one um, next to Wellington. So we've had with the uh, the fifth sixtieth, perhaps a uh, an unfairly forgotten battalion. Uh, we've got here an unfairly forgotten uh, general, uh, which Murray, who was uh, Wellington's uh, effectively his chief of staff for the bulk of the Peninsula War. Uh, this is actually written by a uh, a descendant of of Murray. Um, so there's a lot of use of family papers and letters, uh, as well as uh, more formal archival sources. And again, this, this is a story of, of his whole life, from, from his early days in Scotland, through the, uh, the campaigns in Flanders, uh, and his life uh, after the Napoleonic Wars as well, with a, uh, a rather scandalous elopement and, uh, and marriage, just to add a little bit of spice for uh, those who want something more than the, uh, the bare military details. So hopefully in this series we've for the Peninsula Enthusiast done uh, a fair bit, there's more still to come, but hopefully that will keep people satisfied for uh, a little while at least.